Good evening. It's good to see you. I'm seeing you all. I, uh, boy, it's it's just it's just a great honor to be to be in front of you all, to be in front of uh, fellow Christians, and allowing me the opportunity to speak here um, as a part of your worship service. And I hope that the study I put into this will come across, and that we can all gain something from being here, both intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, and everything, that we can glorify God by our presence here this evening. So thank you all again, and I hope that we all can gain something from this. I remember uh, growing up in southern Indiana, hearing on the radio, Sunday, 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 all the time on the commercial, especially at a certain time of year, not the winter month, months, but more of the summer and the spring months, there was um, outlaws, sprint cars, uh, stock car races at this racetrack. And these commercials would come on the radio announcing that the first day of the week is going to come and these racers are going to come to this oval track out here in Hopstad, Indiana, and they're going to battle it out to see who can get the trophy. And so this would be announced all throughout the week until finally it would come. Commercials on the radio, commercials on the television. They wanted the word out that a big event was coming that this race was happening, and they wanted everyone who was possible to come out to view this. Well, God, He has announced something as well. He has announced something that is far greater than any sprint car event, far greater than any kind of earthly race that, that, that we could imagine. And He announced this in such a way to, to well, we'll see, we're going to look at who this was announced to and who's going to be involved in this event. Uh, what's going to be involved in this event that God's announcing and the where and the when of this event. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 2. We're going to look at the first four verses this e evening. Again, Isaiah chapter 2. God is announcing a big event that's going to happen. He's announcing it for everyone to hear according to what he has written, for the Bible is available to, I believe, anyone who seeks, searches the out, especially here in East Tennessee, you can't go anywhere without finding a Bible somewhere. Even staying in a hotel room, you're going to find a Bible there at least placed by the Gideons or something. But Isaiah chapter 2, first four verses. It's good to read our text. So let's begin. The word which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it will come about that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. And many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he will judge between the nations and will render decisions for many peoples. And they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears and the pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they learn war. Again, there are three, three pieces of this event we're looking at. The who of this event, the what of this event, and the where and when combined. The who of this event starts in chapter 2, or excuse me, verse 2. The end of this verse, it says, and all the nations will stream to it. All the nations. It, if you look at the, the rest of the Old Testament, you're going to see so much focus upon the Jews, upon the nation of Israel. Why? Because God chose the Jewish nation for a specific purpose. God chose that nation. You had to be. You had to recount your your lineage, your bloodline, all the way back to a certain person to be able to perform certain activities and certain rituals as well. There was um, a process to this all. You had to be of a certain bloodline. But it says here that all the nations will stream to it. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who your mom, your dad, your cousin. It doesn't matter who they were. And it does not matter if you can trace your lineage back to Aaron or Levi, or Judah. All the nations will stream to this. 
Apparently, this is something beyond the Jewish religion because, again, all the nations... Genesis 12, verse 3, uh, remember God is telling Abraham about this promise he's given. He's given him land. He's going to give him a, a nation. And he says, all nations will be blessed because of your seed. Maybe this has something to do with it. And then we come to verse 3. More of the who. It says... And many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God and Jacob. Come, let us go. Like at the train station, you hear the conductor say, All aboard! The train's docked. It's, it's, it's ready to take off. And the conductor's just inviting everyone on the train. And this train, the ticket's already paid. All the, all the fees, everything you had to do to get on this train is already paid for you. The, the conductor says, it's okay. Just come on in. The, the, the verse says, let us go, as in, let's get a move on. Let, let's go ahead and go to this. Because if this is a big, a big event from God, I want to be a part of that. So again, the conductor is saying, God is saying, come on, come on board. Let us go to this destination. Let us move move along here, and, and speaking about God, verse 4, at the beginning of it says, and he will judge between the nations and will render decisions for many peoples. You see, the other who of this is God. It's not Moses standing over the children of Israel telling them what they need to do. It's not Joshua leading us or leading anyone else on to do something. It's not King David. It's not Saul. But it's God. God is the one who will, let's say, render decisions. God is the judge. He is the one looking over. He is the one looking on taking care of this event. The one deciding what goes on. And we're going to see more about this in just a minute, but then there's the second part is, is the what of this big event. What is going to be happening here? Look at verse 3. In the, in, in the middle of it, it says that he may teach us concerning his ways and that we may walk in his paths. Have you ever been working on something so diligently? You've been working on something it's just been your focus, almost your obsession. You're just, you, you just continue to work on it, and you have lost track of time, space, reality. You're just so focused on this one thing. You're so focused that you lost track of eating. Has that ever happened to you? That you were doing some project, and the next thing you know, it's about two or three hours past the time you normally eat. And then all of a sudden, your stomach lets you know that you have skipped a meal and that you need to go find some food. That hunger just drives you, doesn't it? That hunger of... You, you were focused on one thing, but once you realized you were hungry, all your thoughts, everything is going towards that. You had that hunger, the desire for food, because you had not had it in a while. This is the kind of learning I believe God is talking about here. I believe Isaiah is trying to let us know that He may teach us concerning His ways that we might walk in His path. If God is presenting something, this big event, and it's about learning, and it's about God teaching us, we better come with an appetite to learn. We better come with an appetite that says, I want to know more about this, and nothing will stop me from, from learning this truth, learning what, what God has offered to us here. That's what we're talking about. But something really interesting further on, in the middle part of, of verse 4, it says, and they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. We're going to be farmers. Farmers. So, this event God's talking about, apparently the people in there are going to farm. They're going to take their swords, whatever weapons they have, and they're going to put them into pieces so that they can be used to till the soil. They're going to take whatever kind of weapons they have and make it to where they can plant seed better. They're going to use the implements they made for war and use it 
to cultivate land, to, to plant seed, to grow, apparently these people are going to be farmers. But what kind of farmers they are, that's what's important. And the kind of farmers, I, I know you know where this is going. Jesus gave that parable about the good soils, about a sower went out to sow and he, he, he scattered seed. Paul is talking about how he, he, he plants and, and Apollos waters, but God gives the increase. Brethren, we're all, we're all farmers here. We're in a co-op here. We, we are all farmers together. And this big event is all about farming. I'm sure you're, you're catching on to what this big event is, but we're going to continue on. In the last part of verse 4, it says, Nation will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they learn war. Now, did this ever happen in the nation of Israel before? Did it ever happen that they, they could put down their weapons and walk around as if nothing is wrong? Did they ever stop fighting throughout their existence? I can't think of a time whenever it was peaceful for really any great length of time because, well, it was a national religion. But God is talking about this event that's coming that, remember, all